start the book off with a bang, right? So the book, you know, it, it tells certain stories. And one that I found particularly very interesting was your relationship with Kurt Gibson because he wanted to leave, you know, like he, he felt that it was, you know, like he didn't feel safe living in Los Angeles anymore. He wanted to leave and he felt like you weren't doing your job as a general manager. And it, it comes back to my point about, you know, feeling, you know, your emotions, you know, like you have to, you know, check certain emotions at the door. What was the whole story, you know, behind that? Like him wanting to leave, you know, you guys kind of getting into it a little bit. And how do you feel like your relationship has grown from everything that you guys have gone through? Well, Kirk and I certainly have had a, uh, uh, a long um, and really what I would term a great relationship. Because what Kirk brought to the Dodgers, of course, in 88 uh, is a significant part of Dodger history and baseball history. But um, in uh, a, a year later, and uh, Kirk being a Michigan guy and Midwest guy and being in Los Angeles, and some things that were concerning to him regarding the safety of his family. He was very concerned about that. And um, uh, I had a little scouting report on Kirk that uh, was kind of who Kirk is that I knew from uh, a few others close to Kirk that he, along the way, uh, will challenge people. That's part of who Kirk is, whether it's an opposing player or whatever it may be, and trying to accomplish what he wants to accomplish. So he had asked to be traded, and um, he uh, felt, um, I believe this was the year after he won, I believe this was uh, 1989, yeah. and uh, had uh, made that request to me. Uh, and I told him that Kirk, I respected his request, and I would do what I could but uh, my obligation was to the Los Angeles Dodgers. And so the Sunday before the All-Star game that year, uh, we got into um, what turned out to be quite a screaming match as well documented by those who were in the clubhouse uh, because Kirk felt that I wasn't doing my job and not trading him and that uh, I didn't appreciate the fact that he was judging me on how I did my job. I didn't judge him on how he did his job. And, uh, but what I really remember is when play resumed after that Sunday, after the All-Star game, Kirk and I, we uh, went, opened up the second half in Chicago. And Kirk and I uh, met in the clubbies room in, uh, in Wrigley Field, a very close quarters right. in the picture and know of Wrigley Field. And uh, I told him, I said, Kirk, uh, it's a good thing you got to, mild-mannered Asian because I said you got a hell of a temper and he said Fred don't tell me about my temper he said when you put your glasses on the top of your head and, and got in my face don't tell me about my temper and we both kind of smile like okay and uh, I said Kirk I, I understand and I will do what I can and he said Fred he said I know that and I want you to know other one other thing I will do my best as long as I wear a Dodge uniform. I said, Kirk, of that, I have no doubt. So that was our relationship. He ultimately left after three years as a free agent. I remember Kansas City, Kirk Robinson, the general manager, called me and said, Fred, what do you think? I said, Kirk, I would sign him as it can be one of the greatest influences on a club that I've ever seen. And Few have been more supportive in my cancer journey than Kirk. So I guess really the story of that, as we discussed earlier, is that you can have differences along the way, and particularly if you're passionate about what you do. And you should be, and you better be passionate about what you do if you're going to be successful. But if you develop a mutual respect and we did, and those friendships endure. And I'll never forget a recent call of a uh, phone rang, it was mid morning. Was, he said, Freddie says, I'm just going into a um, school here to speak. And I was just thinking about you and I want to know how you're doing. And I said, Kirk, I'm, I really appreciate your call. And I'm doing fine. One of any number of calls or texts. 
and not because it's Kurt Gibson, a famous player, but because it's a a friend and uh, at a time that we spent together that was important to us in our lives. It doesn't have to be Major League Baseball. It could be any field. It could be any area. But uh, to have uh, friendships that are everlasting uh, is one of the real values of life. And the only way, in my view, that you create those gets back to Jack to what we talked about originally is through honesty yep. and transparency. And if we maintain those with uh, friends, with family, we will, I can assure you, from my experience, benefit by those. So uh, I appreciate, appreciate uh, that friendship. And I appreciate Jack for giving me the opportunity to cover um, uh, some past uh, years and experiences and for the um, uh, wonderful plug that you've um, uh, given to uh, uh, our book, uh, All Net Proceeds to um, City of Hope, uh, Extra Innings, Fred Clare's Journey to City of Hope, and Finding a, um, a World Championship Team. And uh, wonderful to see um, Tommy on this cover as a uh, as a world champion uh, managed trust. So I really appreciate um, the time for the uh, promotion of the book.